I thank the gentleman for uh, recognizing me. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the McConnell Amendment that I think we'll vote on on, uh, on the floor of the Senate this week. Uh, this is an amendment that uh, really clarifies whether or not Congress ever intended to give the Environmental Protection Agency uh, the authority to regulate greenhouse gases. Uh, they have a finding that gives themselves that authority, but uh, the people who were involved in passing that law initially uh, say that that wasn't the intention of the law. Uh, if it is the intention of the law, the Congress should step up and clarify that. But I think this amendment uh, c clearly uh, expresses uh, the view of the American people uh, that the Congress should do it jo its job, not leave it to the regulators uh, to, to do the job. And Senator McConnell has brought that amendment to the floor, but it's an amendment that uh, Senator Inhofe has worked on uh, this topic for a long time. Uh, Senator Brasso has worked on this topic for a long time, and I'm convinced uh, as the ballots are cast, as the votes are, are, are uh, made this week uh, on this bill, that uh, on this amendment, that senators from both parties are going to say, no, that's not the job of the EPA. It's not what the Congress intended the EPA to do. And this is a great example of the Congress trying to step up uh, and make the point that people shouldn't be able to do, the regulators shouldn't be able to do by regulation what the legislators are unwilling to do by legislation. Uh, as this uh, issue was discussed last year, the cap and trade uh, law that uh, passed the House in the last Congress, uh, people around America looked at this and they said higher prices are not uh, the way to, to, to get more efficient energy policies. The way to get more efficient energy policies is to look for ways to produce more American energy, to have a marketplace that has more choices than the choices we have now. Uh, as people looked at this issue, they said, no, let's, let's find more American energy of all kinds. Uh, let's be cons uh, conservationist and encourage that we use that energy uh, in the most efficient possible way. And let's also be out there uh, researching uh, and investing in the future so that we know what we want our energy to picture to look like a generation from now, not that we blindly rush in uh, and think that high prices uh, will solve our energy problems. Uh, Mr. President, we all know that uh, the President uh, of the United States before the election in 2008 uh, in talking to the editorial board at the San Francisco Chronicle uh, made the comment that under his energy policies, energy prices would necessarily skyrocket. Uh, but the President's looked at this economy uh, closely, I hope, over the last uh, two years of his presidency, uh, and uh, clearly every signal uh, from the administration now is that they have concerns about $4 a gallon gasoline, uh, even though there are people in that advisory group who at one time said gas prices should be as high as the gas prices in Europe. That's the way to solve our use of gasoline. You know, we don't live in Europe. Uh, we, don't, we live in a country that is large and expansive and requires travel and requires commerce. Uh, and so high gas prices are not the answer uh, to our transportation problems, and higher utility bills are not the answer to our energy problems. Uh, in fact, as people looked at the potential of cap and trade uh, on, um, uh, on, uh, on utility bills, uh, they looked at how much of our utilities come from coal. And of course, cap and trade, uh, as would be EPA regulations that would try to, to impose cap and trade by regulation, uh, cap and trade is per particularly focused at coal-based utilities. And Mr. President, from the middle of Pennsylvania to the western uh, edge of Wyoming, 50% of the, of the electricity in the country comes from coal. Uh, in your state and my state, a, a significant majority of the electricity comes from coal. In, in, in Missouri, it's 82% of the electricity comes from coal. And in our state, the utility providers went together, uh, the, the, the rural electric cooperatives, the municipal utilities, the, the privately owned, the publicly owned went together, funded a study uh, that no one's ever found fault with, no one's challenged the study, 
And in that study, uh, in our state, the average utility bill would go up about 80% in the first 10 years under cap and trade. It would come close to doubling in the first 12 years. Uh, and for many utility customers, it would double. If the average bill is going to go up 80%, uh, for many uh, of the customers out there, their bill would double in 10 years. And for almost, for the average customer, it would double in about a dozen years. Uh, and who benefits from that? Uh, at a, a hearing the other day with the EPA administrator, I, I talked about a visit I had last fall with uh, someone who uh, explained to me he was an hourly employee at a company. Uh, and by that point, with the discussion of cap and trade, almost all Missourians knew that our utility bill would about double in 10 years. And here's what he said to me, Mr. President. He said, uh, if my utility bill doubles, uh, that's a bad thing. If my retired mother's utility bill doubles, that's a worse thing. But if the utility bill at work doubles and my job goes away, then the other bills don't matter all that much because I can't pay mine and I can't help my mom pay hers. It just happened, you know, he had a PhD in common sense, if not in economics, uh, and that's what happens if we allow these bills to go up. And because of that discussion, uh, I, I stand here today absolutely confident that in the foreseeable future, the Congress will not impose that penalty on our economy. And if the Congress won't impose that penalty on our economy, we shouldn't let regulators impose that penalty on our economy. Uh, and what this amendment does, what the McConnell Amendment does, again with the hard work of Senator Inhofe and Senator Barrasso and others, uh, it just simply uh, redefines uh, the authority or, or maybe reemphasizes the definition that the Congress thought it was giving uh, the Environmental Protection Agency and says that you can't regulate these greenhouse gases under the Clean Air Act. It doesn't uh, stop the uh, Clean Air Act's provisions to protect clean air in every way that was anticipated until the recent determination that somehow EPA had the authority to also regulate uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, but it does refocus the EPA on the intention of the Clean Air Act not their expansion of the Clean Air Act. And by the way, the EPA has no ability to expand the Clean Air Act. That's the job of the Congress of the United States. Uh, and it's fine if we want to have that debate. In fact, we had that debate last year. And the House passed a bill that would have done what, this, what uh, the EPA's new sense of their own mission would do. Uh, and the American people, I think, spoke pretty loudly about that. Uh, and because of that, the last Congress didn't pass that bill. The House of Representatives passed a bill, but the Senate didn't pass that bill. Uh, and this Congress isn't going to pass that bill either. And I, I would predict that the next Congress won't pass that bill. And why won't they pass the bill? Why won't we pass a bill in this Congress? Why won't the next Congress pass a bill? Because they know that it has devastating impact on our economy. And if the Congress doesn't want to have devastating impact on our economy, uh, we also shouldn't want the Environmental Protection Agency to have devastating impact on our economy. In fact, when you look at the economies around the world, the economies that have the greatest problems with air and water are the economies that failed. The economies where at some point those countries decide ultimately, we're going to do whatever it takes uh, to get back to where we can have jobs that allow families to live. Uh, and. The EPA is bound and should be bound by what the Congress initially intended with the Clean Air Act, not what the EPA thinks today is their job, and particularly if it's not a job uh, that everybody in this building knows that the legislators will not do. And if the legislators won't do it, the legislators shouldn't let the regulators do it. Uh, and this simply uh, clarifies that. I urge my colleagues this week to vote for this amendment, uh, to make it clear to the Environmental Protection Agency that they have plenty of things to do and many things that we will support them as they do. Uh, but this isn't one of them. This hurts our economy. It is not their mission. It was not the intention of the Clean Air Act. Uh, and this amendment uh, allows that uh, to be reinforced once again 
uh, by the Congress of the United States, the group that's supposed to pass the laws. Laws aren't supposed to be passed by regulators. Uh, I suppose they're intentionally determined to be implemented by regulators, but not created by regulators or created uh, by the administration. That's our job. And what this bill does is reemphasize our job and, again, doesn't let a regulatory group uh, do a job that increases the utility bill, that doubles uh, the electric bill in Missouri and raises the electric bill uh, in the vast uh, preponderance of America uh, for people retired on a fixed income, for jobs that clearly will go away if those electric bills are raised, and they will not go to, country, to other places in the United States in most cases. They'll go to other countries that care a whole lot less about what comes out of the smokestack than we do. So if the EPA is allowed to do uh, with greenhouse gases what it suggests, what it says it wants to do, uh, not, we will lose the jobs uh, and the problem will get greater because these jobs will go to countries uh, that care a whole lot less about emissions uh, than we do. Uh, let's let the legislators do their job, Mr. President. Uh, and I encourage my colleagues to vote for this amendment this week. Uh, I uh, am uh, going to question a quorum so the quorum call can begin again uh, as uh, our colleagues are thinking about how we approach this important issue about our economy and about our jobs, about our families, and about our future. And uh, I yield the floor, Mr. President.